Hey there, welcome to The Jenna Banks Show. I am Jenna, your host, and I'm all about helping you live life to your fullest potential. Today's show is all about going for exactly what you want in life. Have you been the kind of person who has done that? Or have you kind of been the person who, like many of us, fall into patterns of people pleasing, trying to please our parents or what we think society wants of us, um, and not necessarily ending up happy with the final results, feeling a little bit dissatisfied with our lives um, and, and really just not going for what it is that we truly want, whether it is you might want to become a, a, an oil painter, or perhaps you want to start a company, or perhaps you really, really, really just want to be a really great hairdresser, but your parents wanted you to go to med school. You know, going for what you want in life is unique to every single one of us. We're all so different. We're all so individual. And so there are lots of things, and you're not alone in this, there's lots of things that can hold us back from really going for what we want. But today, I really want to shed a light on this topic and help you kind of think about things a little bit differently. So to help me shed some light on this very important topic is the lovely, talented Kesley Smith. You're going to absolutely love her. Kesley is the Director of Business Development and Corporate Communications at the publisher Greenleaf Book Group. She spearheads innovative initiatives to expand Greenleaf's presence both online and offline. She manages all company marketing initiatives, corporate communications, and she cultivates strategic partnerships, strengthening brand awareness to drive revenue and consistent growth. Basically, she's a badass. She founded and pioneered the launch of Brain Trust Inc., uh, an empowerment and diversity-focused imprint at Greenleaf Book Group. Hesley not only holds an MBA, but she has two undergraduate degrees from the University of Texas at San Antonio and was named a 2020 Publishers Weekly Star Watch honoree. She's also a regular speaker, panelist, and content contributor. Kesley, really a pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you so much for being here on a Friday. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I've been doing a lot of research into social norms that Mm -hmm. us women do, unconscious behavior patterns that we enact that we're just, like I said, unconscious of, but Mm -hmm. that actually hold us back from really being in our power. Mm -hmm. And one of those things I found is the word ambition. Yeah. Okay. So... I've, uh, there's some research. I'm going to go ahead and pull this up because, you know, what I found um, through quite a bit of research is that women are kind of, um, they, they, they view ambition as something they don't want to be associated with. And that sounds Mm -hmm. weird, right? Because I'm sure Mm -hmm. everyone listening or watching this right now is thinking, well, of course, you know, I want to be ambitious. But, and that's true, um, women do want to be ambitious, but the word ambition, to actually own that word and claim Mm -hmm. that word and say, hi, I'm Jenna, I'm a very ambitious person, it's Mm -hmm. something women cringe at. Basically, what I've uncovered is that many women believe that ambition implies something like egotism or selfishness or being overly grandiose or um, Mm -hmm. manipulating others for their own end or their own needs. And I was like, what the heck? Really? Like, that's not how I view it. But that is Mm -hmm. literally the dialogue that plays in the back of most women's minds. And so they'd say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm ambitious. But then when it comes to actually raising the hand and saying, hey, I'm, you know, I'm Jenna, I'm Kesley, and I'm an ambitious person, we we tend to shy away from that. And um, we, here's some of the things that we say to our, uh, ourselves or others when that word comes up. It's like, oh, you know, no, we'd rather say things like, it's not about me. It's about the work, right? Or, mm-hmm. uh, or it's about helping others. No, 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 no. It's not about me. And we think that that is a good thing to do. That's the way we've been 
I feel like that's the way we've been raised, right? It's like, we don't think twice about it. It's like, yeah, yeah, of course. We don't want to draw too much attention to ourselves. Mm -hmm. We don't want to look like we're like egotistical or uh, conceited or um, narcissistic or whatever. And so we go Mm -hmm. so far the other way and start playing ourselves small. And as a matter of fact, um, some of the research I've uncovered there was an article that was recently published by the Business Insider, and um, it said the article uh, literally was titled, Women Are Afraid to Call Themselves Ambitious at Work, Ambitious in Quotes, and It's Seriously Hurting Their Careers. Mm-hmm. So in that article, they said a recent poll of 3,000 women found that most women identify as ambitious when it comes to their careers, but only about one third one third are comfortable using the word ambitious to describe themselves. Interesting distinction, right? Um, And according to, and this is also in the article, according to psychologists, many women are reluctant to use the word to describe themselves out of fear of being seen as too aggressive. Mm. Isn't that interesting? Ambitious as aggressive. So um, I'm just curious, Kesley, because I see you as ambitious. Do you see as yourself as ambitious? I do. And I, you know, I'm one of those people who doesn't think ambition is a dirty word. I am proud to say that I'm very ambitious. I'm very hardworking and I've worked very hard to get to the place of where I am. But I think in terms of what this article is talking about, it almost kind of makes me relate to the word feminist because Mm -hmm. a lot of women do not want to call themselves feminists Mm -hmm. because, you know, they've coined, uh, society has coined this new meaning meaning of feminism towards hating men, which is not it. Feminism is just wanting the same rights Mm -hmm. that men have. It's wanting equality for both genders. Mm -hmm. And so it's not a dirty word. And identifying as a feminist, so many women are afraid to do it. Because society has coined this whole new phrase that comes with being a feminist, and now it's seen as negative, when in reality, it really just means advocating for equal rights. And that's every, all it is. Every woman that's should want to be a feminist. I, I would hope exactly. that everyone is a feminist, but right. it's unfortunate la- that people don't associate the right term with the word, so or the right yeah. meaning with the word. Yeah. So, um, all right. So you definitely are ambitious. I know that about you and I'm glad that you claim it and you own it and Mm -hmm. that you understand that we should own it. We should be in our power. So, um, I'm just curious, when did you first start feeling like you just wanted to be ambitious and go for what you wanted in life? Like take me back to the early days of Kesley. What, what was, you know, when did that first start coming up for you? Yeah, well, I mean, I think like many other people, you really don't start stepping into your power until you really know what you want out of life. And I feel like as we're growing up, we're still trying to figure it all out, especially in early high school years, you just want to fit in. And you're not really thinking about what you can do to be different or what mark you're going to make on this world. If you figured that out early, that hats off to you. I just know I didn't. I, yeah, you know, I didn't I had, I had moved so many times. I was honestly just trying to fit in in high mm-hmm. school and mm-hmm. have people like me. And I still am a people pleaser and want people to like me to a fault. But I think where I really started to embrace who I was and who I who I wanted to be was in college. When I started studying classes that were so effective towards me. I was in public relations and business classes in undergrad, and I loved it. I Mm. loved everything about it. I loved the creativity. I loved just finally studying something that meant something to me because I feel like in high school and when you're doing your prerequisites, unless you really know what you want to do, you're still kind of just going through the motions. And it really stuck for me that I really wanted to be a strong woman in business. When I started taking control of these classes and I started getting accolades in my classes, you know, getting case studies published or, you know, winning class competitions and things like that. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to apply to graduate school. I'm going to graduate top of my class. I really wanted to I really want to go into the business world and not only succeed, but make a difference. And so I started working 
from a very early stage in college, doing a ton of internships, you know, getting a lot of experience to work towards those goals. Yeah. And I had, and I know not a lot of people have this, I had endless support from my parents. And I think that's really what propelled me to move forward was that my parents are very equipped in the business world. And so they were really giving me what I needed to move forward. You know, you need to get this you need to get experience here and nice. really helping me achieve those goals mm. and really giving me the support that I needed that you can do this. Mm. You should do that. You should apply. You should, you should do these things. Mm -hmm. And I think having that endless support of people in your corner who want to see you succeed is so helpful towards that final goal. Or, you know, I don't think, ambition is um, somewhere where you can ultimately end up. I think it's a never ending cycle. Mm -hmm. But at the time, I was just so dedicated to not only doing something that I loved, but also making a difference in what I was mm. doing. And because there were right now, there's a lot more female leaders and, you know, women CEOs and things like that. But when I was in college, there weren't a ton mm. There weren't a ton. And, you know, seeing more women who have stepped into their power and who have really utilized their strengths as women to succeed in the world and not only to succeed, but, you know, leave a mark and make a difference. I think that is what gave me the the ambition. Yeah. Fuel, if you yeah. Will. I think that's from the research I've been doing, what I found gives women, most women, the fuel to be ambitious mm -hmm. and also to be powerful because when they can equate it to doing good in the world, making an impact for the greater good, then mm -hmm. we can more easily step into the word ambitious. I, mm -hmm. And that's great. That's cool. It's good to understand that at whatever it takes, you know, and, and anything benefiting the greater good is, is great for everyone. There's nothing wrong with that, but really understanding that that's the way we think and mm -hmm. so finding ways for us to step into our ambition and into our power uh, from that perspective, I think is a really interesting, you know, so, something really interesting to take a look at. And, yeah. you know, because, you know, as you and I both want to make change in this world for the better mm -hmm. and, and empower everybody, more equality, more diversity, et cetera. Um, I think it's, you know, really, um, you know, important to shed a light on these particular types of topics. Yeah. And, and for me, it does come down to these social norms, these, these unconscious things that we don't really mm -hmm. think about just behaviors, everyday behaviors that we just accept as being part of a woman or, yeah. you know, what a man is. So I'd love to dig a little bit deeper into how you were raised, because I'd love to know, you know, us, uh, so many women are raised to, uh, you know, not be ambitious, that's just something that's not talked about in the, the family. It's like, it's not like, oh, honey, go out and be ambitious. It's more like, oh, honey, like look beautiful, um, you know, take note, learn how to take care of your husband or whatever and go out and find a great mm -hmm. man and uh, have a bunch of kids or whatever. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I wasn't raised like that, but I'm not saying I was raised uh, in any great way in particular, but I wasn't raised like that. But how, how were you raised and it did it, mm -hmm. and did it give you a different perspective than most other women? Yeah. So I will give a hat off to my parents right now because they really, um, they really instilled in both my brother, my sister and myself that we need to go after what we want. And I've seen, and especially growing up and seeing so many um, girlfriends and people talk around me about how their goal was to, you know, get into a good school, join a good sorority, marry the right guy out of college, start having kids, um, and, you know, learn how to take care of their husband and take care of their family. But I never heard them say, oh, well, I want, or I, mm. you know, this is what I want or this is what I want to do. It was always, you know, I'm going to do this because, or I was raised to do this because, and it really, it kind of got me thinking because I was never, I never once heard the phrase, you know, go after, have a man give you what you want. I right. never once heard that phrase in my life. In your family, in, family. In, in your family, in my, yeah. in my, in my family. Yeah. And so from a very young age, 
um, where most girls are like, okay, um, I'm going to start dating or, you know, I want to look really nice to do whatever. My parents were always like, well, what do you want to do in life? And how, how, how can we support you in getting there? And my dad was a little bit different. Because he would always tell me, I don't want you to get into a serious relationship until you get everything that you want. That's amazing. Because he he has seen and he has witnessed so many people who either they marry young and then they yeah. don't go after their, their own goals or yeah. they start having kids too young. And to the people who have done this, this is no shame at all. This yeah. is just more so what I learned growing up. Mm-hmm. He just saw so many women and same with my mom. They saw so many women who didn't eventually do what they wanted to do yeah. because they were so, it was so embedded in their brains that this is what society thinks they had to do. Like and self-sacrificing so, for exactly. your family. Uh, exactly. putting yourself aside. Oh, now once your mommy, it's not about your life. It's about your kid's life. Exactly. Yeah. And so when I, you know, when I told my parents, cause I have a goal of being, you know, in a chief officer position at a company, you know, I don't know what that goal looks like right now, or like what kind of company I just know I want to be either CEO, a CMO, I, I want to be in charge. Girl, and, that is um, ambitious. If I've ever heard I, of it. <laughs> I want to make a difference and I want to, I want to do all these things. And, you know, I, I've been saying that for, for years. I, you know, I want to make a difference. I want to be a CEO of a company. I want to be a CMO of a company. I want to make change. And I want, because, you know, be the change you want to see in the world. It really starts with us. Mm -hmm. And my parents have always instilled in me don't rely on anyone to give that to you. Mm -hmm. You have to go after everything that you want, because no one is going to do it for you. That's amazing. And, right. And so whenever I, you know, whenever I hear, hear friends talking about when they go home for the holidays, and their parents are like, asking them, you know, who are they dating? When are they getting married? And they feel that pressure to be in a role that society has oh, yeah. made them think is normal. I never hear that from my parents. My parents are glad when I'm not dating anyone, because they're like, that it's only going to hold you back. I want that you to get everything that amazing. you want first. And, you know, when you find a partner who supports that, great. But a lot of people will see that ambition as a threat and they will try to pull you down from it. Mm-hmm. And so what I want you to do is I want you to focus on everything that you want. Travel, do the things that you want, get the promotions. And you know what? If you find someone who is relentlessly supportive of that great we're not telling you to not to not date but also don't let anybody tell you that you're too ambitious don't Mm. let anybody try to threaten or dim your light because they can't because you're too bright for them and having that support from a very young age definitely shaped my whole outlook on the word ambition i think and so Yeah, I, you know, I do not think of it as a dirty word. I am proud to say I am ambitious, but I won't say that it hasn't been thought of as conceited or bitchy or greedy. Have you been accused of that or has anyone? Yeah. Oh yeah. And how did you deal? I'm so curious. How did you deal with that and still stick with your guns? Did you, did it ever hit you like, Oh, maybe I am. Maybe I should shrink back. Did that ever occur to you? Or did you just stay solid in your ambition? I would love to say I was, I just gave him the middle finger and said no. But um, it's, you know, something that has taken me a little bit longer is the is the self love aspect of it all and realizing that I am deserving of everything that I want. And realizing that the way some people treat you is a reflection of them and not you. Oh, and so so powerful. Yes, that right there is so powerful. Everyone listening right now, (laughs) how people treat you is more of a reflection of how they feel about themselves. And that's a Mm -hmm. very powerful lesson to learn. You got to do what you got to do for you and stay true to you and what's in your heart. And when you do, you are shining your light so bright. You feel passionate. You feel happy. You feel fulfilled. But if someone's coming along and trying to claim you're being conceited or this or that, that, that has nothing to do with you. 
Mm-hmm. And, and who cares? Like, would you, would you want to go telling someone else they're conceited and try and make somebody for somebody else to live a different life other than what they were meant right. to live? Like it makes no sense, but yet we personalize this stuff and, and all of us do it. All of us women, especially. And then we take it to heart and then we just want to fit in and, you know, be liked. I think that's right. a big problem. And at least this research I'm doing also has shown that we just, we, we shy away from ambition because of being worried of being seen as conceited or selfish or whatever. And we just want to be liked. So we start to play it small to fit in. But what we're doing along the way is dimming our light. We are dimming mm-hmm. our power. We are not being true to ourselves. So yes, that is, I, I'm sorry to go on a little rant there, Kesley. Oh, no. I think that was a really important you know, point that you stumbled upon um, as we kind of unravel uh, this, this word ambition and, and, and unravel women's reaction to mm-hmm. the word ambition and being ambitious. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Something else my mom has always told me is someone else's opinion of me has nothing to do with me. That's right. If I, if I feel a certain way about myself, it's, it's what I think matters. Do Mm -hmm. I like myself very much? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Do I care that this person thinks that I am self-righteous and ambitious because I have certain goals? It it doesn't apply to me. That's their, that's their perception. Mm -hmm. And that's what they can think. But I'm not here to try and change somebody else's opinion of me. Yeah. Or please them. Right. People will have a certain perception perception of you and seldom can you ever change that. So true. And trying, and I've learned this, this is not something I'm not talking from a, like, I've known this for years. This has been a very, like, I've learned this along the way. And trust me, I have been that person who takes what everybody says very close to heart. And I, yeah. you know, I have been broken down by what people have said about me or perceive mm-hmm. me as a certain way. But as I've grown up and as I've, you know, experienced more things, it's more so what they are currently dealing with. It's more so a reflection of the inner wounds that they have yeah. rather than it having to do with me. They haven't and given so, themselves permission to be right. what you are. It's like they're rejecting them. If they reject you, they're rejecting themselves essentially Mm -hmm. because we treat others how we treat ourselves. Right. Right. And I think it's so important to remember, especially when you go into any like work situation or social situation or things like that, that not everybody is going to like you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's really hard to wrap your head around. I know I want everybody to like me. I'm a people pleaser to a fault. I will not say I have (laughs) mastered this art yet, but it's also important to remember that if you have done nothing wrong to someone, or if you have, all you've done is be authentic. Be yourself. Yeah. Authenticity scares the shit out of most people. Uh, And so when you're able to be a hundred percent yourself, people will often be so intimidated by it Mm -hmm. that they'll call you fake. Mm. Or they'll call you self-righteous or they'll mm. call you greedy or whatever. Yeah. Um, when you are, all you want to do is just go after your goals and succeed in life. And and what if you let those people stop you? You know, what if, I mean, there's mm-hmm. the other side of the coin because you you fought that battle and you're winning that battle. Thank goodness. But so many of us lose that battle and give in and start morphing and molding into someone we're not. And you know what that does? I've found through research, it actually causes anxiety, depression, mental health problems. When we don't give Mm -hmm. ourselves the ability to be our true selves, when you start packaging yourself up into this fake version of you, it's very stressful Mm -hmm. way to live. Yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, in a world where everybody is trying to be something other than themselves. Just mm. be yourself because mm-hmm. everybody else is taken. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. Oscar Wilde said that. Love so that. I'm not going to take credit for that quote. <laughs> but but I mean, I think, it's, I think it's so important to just remember at the end of the day, do what you want. Yeah. Do what you want to do. Go after the, what you want. Because if you cater to someone else your entire life, you're not going to achieve the things that you want to achieve. Yeah. And if you 
my biggest fear is living a life and looking back and having regrets for not going after what I wanted. That's the biggest issue for me too. Mm -hmm. Any regrets for not going for it? There's, do you ever feel regrets for going for something? Even if, if you fail, do you ever no. regret doing it? Me neither. No, Never. because another great quote that I absolutely live by is rejection is redirection. Mm. And it is never, it has never proven me wrong. Every time I've gone after something and it hasn't worked out, or I, let's say I've um, tried to do something or I've applied for a position and it didn't work out, mm -hmm. something else that has come along has always been so much better. Mm. And it's always almost made me think that I'm glad I didn't go in that direction right. because I'm so happy where I'm at and I can't believe the experiences that this has unlocked. And even if it's a negative experience, like even if it's a negative relationship, you end up learning so many different things from that aspect that you come out of it a brand new person. I think we've coined this term as millennials as a glow up because so many people <laughs> will have certain aspects of relationships that cause them to focus on themselves, mm -hmm. go after what they want, stop, you know, catering to their partner. And they have these massive things happen to them. You know, they they get that graduate degree or, mm -hmm. you know, they launch their own business or they mm -hmm. do so many different things that they have been holding themselves back from. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying the relationship held them back, but they've been able to rediscover themselves from that yeah. redirection. That's a really, this is a really good point. I'd also like to dive into, and that yeah. is that, you know, you, so these friends of yours were pouring so much of them, or these people you were talking about, mm -hmm. were pouring so much of themselves into the relationship, but it's true. It's not that the relation, having a relationship is a bad thing. I love, mm -hmm. I love the idea of being in love, you know, yeah. being in a relationship is a, a, can be a wonderful thing, but what, where it goes wrong is this old school conditioning and programming that we have that we're supposed to pour all of our energy and selves into this relationship, which becomes this new identity version of ourselves, right? This new identity, mm -hmm. this new, now we are this couple. We, I am now this couple. No, you're still mm -hmm. you. You still yeah. have a life to live. You still need to be an individual. You need to really come to a relationship being complete as a person. And then right. it's more exciting. The relationship is better. It actually benefits the relationship when you're pursuing your goals and hopes and dreams and not pouring so much of yourself into the relationship. Because what happens when you do that, I found, is you have so many expectations in return and you're going to want, you're going to pour so much of yourself in, and then you're going to start to feel drained and you're going to go, Hey, partner of mine, make me happy, please. You know, I need you to make me happy. I need you to cater to me. I need you to make up for all these things that I'm not doing for myself now. And mm -hmm. that's an unrealistic expectation. And of course they're going yeah. to fail because guys aren't really up to that task for the most part anyway. And they're just going to be like, what? I don't understand. Like, what am I mm -hmm. doing wrong? I'm trying my best. And the truth is you just needed too much because you were pouring too much of yourself in. So it ends up equalizing things so much more when you pour more love into yourself and do the things you want to do in life because you come into the relationship more whole and fulfilled as a person, more vibrant, more energetic, more ambitious, more whatever, and your partner will love you for it. So I find right. quite the opposite to be true. Exactly. And that is exactly the direction where I wanted to go is because you can't pour from an empty cup. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you have relationships that fill you up so much that you do not rely on the other person for that validation. Mm -hmm. You are validating yourself and you're coming to the relationship with a full, with a full cup and you're able to kind of support each other in that. But a lot of times where we see the opposite happen is when so many people are catering or catering so much to someone else yeah. that they lose themselves. Yes. And so, and then they start seeking back some of that validation or that need from that person. Mm -hmm. And that person can't give it to them because- no. It was never, it's never going to be that person's responsibility to yeah. make you happy. Yeah. You have to make yourself happy that's and right. then someone else should just add to it. And that's such an important lesson to remember. Yes. And I know I'm 
me talking like I'm 27. Obviously, I haven't. Yes, seen you guys. She's 27 but... <laughs> years old. Can you imagine like what she's going to be like when she reaches CEO and all of that? Which, by the way, is a really good lead in because I want to talk about what you're up to with Brain Trust Inc. Yeah. Now, Kesley and I are working very closely together, y'all. So I want to bring that to everyone's attention. Kesley is the co-founder, the initial founder of Brain Trust Inc. It was actually her concept, her idea, which is a uh, what an, it's called uh, an imprint, a book imprint. So it's Brain mm -hmm. Trust Inc., which is an imprint uh, of for Greenleaf uh, book group. So Beat Greenleaf is the distributor, and what happens is there's larger companies like you know like Greenleaf or let's say Simon and Schuster or Hay House or mm -hmm. something like that. They'll have various other brands or imprints underneath. Uh, of their their overarching company name or company brand. Yeah. So, and those specific labels or or AKA imprints, um, you know, usually encompass a, a kind of a genre. Like, let's say it might be romance novels or nonfiction mm -hmm. or self help. So, I would love for you to shed a little bit of light on what the Brain Trust Inc. imprint is all about. Oh, my baby. Um, <laughs> So this concept really came to be, um, of course, as Jenna mentioned, I work at Greenleaf Book Group, which is the uh, flagship brand. It's the publishing house that um, that houses uh, many different imprints. And one of the imprints that I launched earlier this year was Brain Trust Inc. So the concept behind this imprint was really giving women a megaphone for to use the imprint as a means to excel their ideas forward. So mm -hmm. I really wanted to give, and this is an imprint that is all inclusive. So I wanted to, I wanted it to be about, yes, women's empowerment and empowerment in general, but I also wanted to capture gender equality in the workplace, mm -hmm. gender equality in general, diversity, inclusion, sustainability, things like that. So of course, this imprint does skew female because mm -hmm. of I do want strong female voices um, who can talk about a large variety of subjects. But to be fully inclusive, we had to give the opportunity for men to speak on these topics as mm -hmm. well, because we Agreed. have so many, so many men who either are CEOs of companies who talk about the value of diversity in leadership or mm -hmm. diversity in a workplace or mm -hmm. culture or things like that. And so this imprint really gives a megaphone to those people who really want to excel these ideas forward. Yeah. And so when I was looking for a partner in this, I had recently read um, one of our authors, Sherry Stewart Deutschman, who I love was, her. <laughs> love her to death, who was a green who is a Greenleaf author. And I had mm -hmm. just read her book, Lunch with Lucy. And Great so book. It's all Great, book. great book. And so it's all about um, leadership through empathy and me identifying as an empath. I really felt that because there are a lot of initiatives I bring to leading my team at Greenleaf through empathy and through compassion and through things like that, that I related so much to her book. And I thought she would be a magnanimous person to have in a partner at this <laughs> imprint because she has this awesome company called Brain Trust, yeah. which is a female entrepreneurship collective that essentially helps women, female entrepreneurs scale their businesses to earn a million dollars or more in profit in you know the term of one year, I believe. And so she has de dedicated yeah. her business at Brain Trust to helping women get their businesses off the ground and helping women succeed. I was like, who? would be a better fit for this imprint than her. Which so, I am a member, by the way, everybody. Right. I am part of the Brain Trust uh, organization. So I'm a new member and I'm really excited mm -hmm. about that membership. They offer so much support to female entrepreneurs. So, um, and I love that mission. Every mm -hmm. single woman owner um, uh, to have a business that creates more than a million dollars annually in revenue. I mean, what a great mission and goal. And mm -hmm. Sherry herself, of course, I'd love to point out that she started a business from her basement and yes. it's all covered in Lunch with Lucy, but she started, mm -hmm. and I love that story so much, but she started a business in her basement, grew it to like 40, $50 million a year and then sold it. I mean, what a massive accomplishment. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'd love to know the statistic about how many women have done that, but I bet you it's in the hundreds at best. I don't think yeah. it's, you know, that's sad, 
but also um, amazing that we're getting to see more women accomplish these things. But I mean, it should be in the thousands. It should be, you know, in the tens of thousands, not mm -hmm. in the hundreds, like I'm sure it is, which, um, but yeah, she's just, I mean, what an amazing partner for you to have yeah. on your team. Right. So, and the whole, a main aspect of her book is treating people right and doing right by your employees. And when you treat people with yeah. kindness, with empathy, with compassion, you know, and how that translates into productivity and profit. And she really wrote a huge testament to that because her people were a huge part of her success. Yeah. And so when I pitched the idea to her, she couldn't say yes fast enough. She was like, uh -huh. I have been wanting to do something similar. I'm so in, how can we start this? And so Amazing. we started meeting and we were like, what, we really started honing down what, cause at first, um, cause brain trust, her company yeah. is exclusive to women only. Mm -hmm. And we started having the conversation about at first it was just going to be, you know, women's empowerment mm -hmm. and, you know, titles by women, mm -hmm. by and for women. Mm -hmm. But as we started talking about, we want this to include diversity inclusion, Love sustainability, things it. like that culture, yeah, things like that. We were like, okay, if we really want to be the change again, I say that quote, because I love it so much, mm. be the change. We need to give the floor to everybody who wants to talk about this, who yeah. has the means to talk about this. And we want, we want these books to not only just affect women, but men too, because we really want these books to be a learning tool or something that you can use to, you know, again, be the change that you want to mm -hmm. see in the world. And so when we started basically ironing out what this imprint was going to do, our mission, that's really where we really came up with the whole empowerment, diversity and inclusion, sustainability, and really cater towards that subject. But again, this imprint it doesn't even have to feature just nonfiction titles. Mm -hmm. You're like, you know, a strong fiction book with a strong yeah. heroine oh, yeah. or a fiction book that talks about, you know, gender inequality or mm -hmm. gender inequality in the workplace mm -hmm. and things like that. Or, you know, a children's book that really talks oh about like God. stepping into your power yes. early. We wanted to capture <gasps> all oh of Oh, I got titles. chills. We need that. Yes. Right. Anybody listening, so, by the way, like if you are thinking about doing this or you have a manuscript like that, definitely reach out to Kesley because they are please. open to submissions. And by the way, my book is on their imprint as well. And I, I couldn't be more proud and excited to be on this new imprint. I mean, I am just so excited. Kesley and Sherry are doing amazing things and they really provide I can attest to this, a lot of support to their authors, especially being a first time author, really important to just have that support. Like how do we know how to, you know, promote and market and stuff like that. And they provide a lot of that help and, and support for you. So, um, and of course they also promote your book and all kinds of stuff. So getting on board with brain trust is a true honor. Um, so I definitely mm -hmm. will include uh, by the end of the show, of course, all the ways in which you can get a hold of Kesley and submit and all of that good stuff, because mm -hmm. we need, we need more voices that are, you know, like you mentioned your, your parents and how you were raised so differently than probably mm -hmm. 98, 99% of women, I'm guessing. But, you know, I mean, it's just, I've not heard of that. It's so rare and it should be more commonplace. But, you know, that also comes to parents being educated on how to break the cycle and mm -hmm. um, stop reliving the patterns because that's what we all end up doing as a default. Myself included when it came to raising my son initially is I defaulted to the patterns, even the patterns I didn't like, but it's right. just, I didn't know any different. And if we can start to consciously become aware of, you know, breaking the cycle, whether we're parenting or whether it's ourselves or whatever, we, we need that. So yes, please, <laughs> please contact uh, Kesley if you have anything uh, like that, that you think would be up there, alley. Yes. And that's something that I think that we've talked about before in meetings too, is part of, again, um, wanting to see change in the world is breaking those cycles and breaking those societal, societal norms. Because yeah. a lot of the ways that we think about society are unconsciously embedded in our brains 
Um, and when we think about how certain situations happen, yeah. it's because a lot of the time those things are not addressed mm -hmm. and they're not, they're not talked about enough. Yeah. And we are conditioned to always really want to not stay quiet, but we're not as conditioned to speak our minds yes. about things mm -hmm. because, and I think as we move forward as a society, more people need to be willing to have these conversations yeah. about internalized misogyny yep. or speaking your mind or going after the things that you want or asking for what you want, mm -hmm. especially in when you enter career or workplace, especially if let's say you are entering a position that is traditionally held by a man mm -hmm. or you're entering a workforce and you talk about this a lot in your book where you're entering a job where it is predominantly male. Mm -hmm. And usually when, um, and I think you did talk about this in your book. Um, I have a whole are, where yeah, I have the whole workplace yeah, uh, section. <laughs> men are a lot more likely to apply for jobs that they are underqualified for. That's right. And they'll just figure it out later. But yep. women will try and look at every single listing and be like, Am I a hundred percent qualified mm -hmm. for this? Can I a hundred percent do this? And we almost restrict ourselves. We disqualify ourselves. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think having these conversations about, you know, making sure that your voice is heard yeah. and making sure that you are speaking for, and you're advocating for the things that you care Advocate about. Advocate for yourself, promote mm -hmm. yourself, get over the idea that it's being cocky. No, that's called ambitious and you want to be ambitious. I mean, right. we should stop shying away from this, but you're right. These conversations need to happen. This is part of mm -hmm. why I'm doing this show. Like we need to be talking about this publicly so that, you know, people can reflect on that and kind of reflect on, the, you know, themselves and say, Hey, yeah, maybe I do have this, this subconscious conditioning that might be holding me back. I mean, I relate to every single thing that I talk about in my book at one point or another, you know, it was a, a battle that I had to overcome. Um, but being aware of them, you know, knowledge is power, right? Yeah. Like it starts with being aware and then you can start to self-reflect and say, hmm, am yeah. I doing any of those things? And then just kind of Try new things, dip your toe in the water and see, well, what would happen if I actually applied for this job where I only meet 50% or 60% mm -hmm. of the criteria, but it's something I really want. It's a dream. It's an ambition of mine. And what's the harm in trying? You know, mm -hmm. what is the harm in trying? You might actually get it. More and more uh, companies have these great diversity and inclusion initiatives where they're actually actively looking to fill their roles with more females. But the problem mm -hmm. is not enough women are applying for, especially these management roles or higher level executive roles, because again, we look at the, the, the qualifications and we just disqualify ourselves if we don't meet right. 100%. We need to be allowing ourselves to go for it, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, your ambition could not be more clear. Kesley, I have to say that, <laughs> I mean, come on y'all. She's 27 and founded <laughs> this new book brand. I mean, I can't even have imagined having done that at 27 and I thought I was pretty ambitious. So I, my hat's <laughs> off to you, girl, you are setting such a great example. And I know, no, no, you're going to do so many amazing things things in this world. And you're, you are the change. You are being the change. You really are. As we bring this to a close, I am so impressed by your ambition. And I hope you only fire more of that up because I know you're going to make such a massive impact in this world. You already are. You are well on your way. I know Brain Trust Inc. is going to be amazing and going to do incredible things in this world. You're just getting started. And mm -hmm. I know with your ambition, sky's the limit for that book imprint and for all the authors that you're going to be working with and representing and uh, all the good that you're going to be doing and continue to do in the world. I just can't wait to follow your journey and be part of it. And, um, and of course, will anybody who wants to connect with Kesley, I'll be sure to include uh, information about that in the notes. So you know how to get in touch with her and of course, definitely follow her on Instagram and all that great stuff. But as mm -hmm. we bring this to a close, is there anything that you'd like to leave, you know, uh, uh, just like a, a last, um, I don't know, last takeaway for the audience, uh, when it comes to going for what you want in life and ambition and all of that. 
just freaking go for it. Yes. Don't think about anyone else. And I don't mean that to come from being a, coming from a selfish nature, but go for the things that you want, because the last thing that you want to do is look at back and have any regrets that you didn't go for something. Yeah. The worst thing that can happen is that someone can say no, mm -hmm. or again, like I said, rejection is redirection. And once you have those, once you go for something, everything is either a blessing or a lesson. And if you start looking at things in the perspective of that, everything is either a blessing or a lesson, you will have a lot more courage to go for the things you want. Because if things don't work out, there are already so many takeaways that you can take from it. And you grow so much as a person. And if it, and if it works out, awesome. That's awesome. And, and if it great. doesn't, redirect. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And everything is an opportunity to grow. And everything is an opportunity to learn as well. So, yeah, you know, we're all, we're all still learning and we're all still trying to figure out where our place is in that world. So my final takeaway is whatever you are, just be a good one. Mm, be a good be version whoever. of who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be whoever you want to be and mm -hmm. be authentically you. Yeah. Because no one else can be you more than you can be you. Mm, great takeaway, Kesley. Wasn't Kesley just amazing? I'm in such awe of her ambition at such a young age. We need so many more women like her. She's definitely leading the path for so many other women to come. If you have a manuscript that you would like to submit to her, either at her Brain Trust Inc. imprint, uh, you can do that at her a website, which is Brain Trust Inc. That's braintrustink.com. Or also you can submit to her company, Greenleaf Book Group, which is the uh, book distributor that she works for, uh, which also the Brain Trust Inc. brand is under. You can find them at Greenleaf bookgroup.com. I can vouch for both of them. They're amazing company to work with as a new author myself. I'm very just amazed and thrilled at the entire process working with them. They're so professional, so good at what they do, so helpful, especially to first, a first time author like myself. So I can highly recommend them. If we haven't connected already on social media, I would love to connect with you. You'll find me on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at jennabanks.0. I'm also very active on LinkedIn. You can find me by typing in my name, Jenna Banks. If you haven't already subscribed to the show, definitely hit that subscribe button now because I have so much more to share with you in the future about living life to your fullest potential. Thank you so much for tuning into the show today. I really hope to see you again next time. And remember, your love is your power. Until next time.